Hey guys, this is part two of a two-part series. So if you haven't seen the first video, click here to watch it now. But first, be sure to join our Discord community by clicking the link below. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to help me provide you with more epic content. Well, it is definitely getting close to that July Infinite reveal at Microsoft's Xbox 2020 event, and I am optimistic for a sweet story or multiplayer trailer, but I'm sure the latter will come first. We can only hope that the rest of the gameplay is as immersive and classic feeling as the first E3 2019 reveal trailer. 343 needs to hit this event out of the ballpark and deliver something both OG Halo fans and the younger generation can all appreciate. Last video we talked about the story of Halo 4 and 5, and where they went wrong. I covered the events that led up to Halo 4, and 343's drift from the traditional idea of Halo, as well as how the story could have been done better. In this video, I will go over the design of the game, map mechanics, game modes, and player movement of the previous two games, and what they could do to improve for Halo Infinite. So let's jump into it. In the first trailer of Halo 4 we got back at E3 2011, we had gotten our first glimpse of 343's art style, and at first, yeah, Chief looked cool. There were new graphics, and he seemed a lot more bulky. But man, even to this day I can never get over those shoulder pieces, and how huge they were. It looked ridiculous. And what is the point of having such huge shoulder armor if you're going to put them so low on the arm, and expose the entire shoulder? I may be nitpicking, but this was my first impression of the game. I love that first trailer so much I recreated in Machinima style, back in Forge and OG Reach. So besides my critique, I was still very optimistic. But after the game launched, and I realized they redesigned every single aspect of the game, I was kind of annoyed. It didn't even look like Halo anymore. Like, I know this is a new company making this game, and they want to make it theirs, but seriously, when you take over a beloved franchise, you need to make sure you stay true to the original concept, or you're going to have a bad time with fans. For Halo Infinite, they need to bring back at least some of the iconic, beloved designs of the original trilogy, like the OG Battle Rifle, the Shotgun, the Fuel Cannon, the Spunker, and the Beam Rifle. For vehicle designs, give us back the OG Scorpion, for the love of God! and the Pelican. The Halo 5 Warthog was fine, I just hated that they changed the turret shield on the gun. It lacks that sexy angled shield of the past, which looked more functional due to the angle. Armor was a big source of outcry in Halo 4 and 5, and with Master Chief donning his signature Halo 2 Mark 6 armor, with minor, may I say actually good changes in the new Infinite trailer, I have high hopes for the armor customization. I can't say whether it was a lighting issue due to Bloom in Halo 4 and 5, but I'm pretty sure Spartan armor is not supposed to glow like a light bulb. The armor texture in 343's franchise not only has a crayon-like look and pastel colors, but there has always been a strange glow I've noticed coming off the characters. I'm not sure if this is due to bad lighting, or if it was a mechanic for the player to spot other people more easily, but it looked god-awful. We need to return to a more battle-hardened look, and for the love of god, reduce the character bloom. I feel they should also go back to the classic art style for their armor as well. It's cool to have unique armor, but make sure it looks functional and fits within the franchise's lore. Also these are Spartans, and not NASCAR drivers, so tone it down on the armor and weapon skins. I feel they should return to a more Halo Reach customization system, rather than the Cancer which is Halo 4 and 5's rec pack system. For my last opinion on art style, I feel they really need to bring back the classic Elite look, mostly due to Halo 4 and 5's Elites seem way too bulky and way too slow to be the Covenant Spartan equivalent. They need to have those long, nimble legs built for speed and get rid of the overly hunched back that makes them look sluggish and dumb. I really miss the original Jackals too. They were hyper as hell, nimble and unnerving to look at. The last character that I hinted at in my previous Halo Infinite video that desperately needs to return is the Brutes, and we do have confirmation that they will return in Halo Infinite because Microsoft just released a teaser trailer for Halo Infinite that includes the Banished returning to the fight and taking over a Halo ring. Hopefully Atriox returns too, because seeing Chief going up against the most powerful Brute would be amazing.
Brutes were the most terrifying enemies to take on in the series, next to Hunters and the Flood. They were huge, savage, and wielded the most hardcore weapons that were definitely OP. The Halo 3 Brute Chieftain was my personal favorite that made me wet my pants every time it showed up. It was panic inducing and its armor was gorgeous to view. I'm glad they're making a return in Halo Infinite. When Halo 4 released, 343 tried to expand on the introduction of loadouts and armor abilities from Halo Reach, and spiced that up with the newly popular loot box system that Mass Effect 3 had released in the March of 2012, and called it Rec Packs, a system following the craze of collectible card game routes. You can unlock packs that had a variety of weapon skins, armor, and weapon attachments, and armor abilities. So instead of a set of armor abilities that everyone had, new players had to compete against players that may or may have not have a slight advantage against them, due to them being a higher rank or spending $100 at 7-Eleven on Mountain Dew and Doritos to unlock more rec packs. This was a microtransaction system nobody asked for. Halo 4 introduced being able to call in power weapons onto the map via a uh, XP charge-up meter, which was fine, but when Halo 5 released, they made that option available to all power weapons and all vehicles, and it went a little too far. You had to go to rec stations to activate them, or choose them at spawn, which was convenient, but the amount of weaponry and vehicles on the map at any given time was just too much. I mean, in Halo 5 Warzone, you had Covenant and Prometheans that would spawn on the map as well, so it became pretty hectic. When Halo Reach came out, I had gotten decently good at MLG, as our clan turned into a competitive MLG clan over time. I used to teach my members how to play MLG, and the timing of power weapons, the spawns, power control positions, and so on. And then Halo 4 came out, and it turned my world upside down. They changed spawning so that you could not spawn trap the enemy team. That's all good and fun, until you're beating the enemy and quartering them just to have them spawn behind you, and then you were fighting on two fronts. So instead of letting that happen, MLG players started to camp back mid-map and take longer shots so they wouldn't get rear-ended. This was fine for maps that had definite your side and my side spawns, but when you threw a circular map into the mix, it was anyone's guess what you had to do. Players adjusted and new techniques were defined, but I just finally started getting good at the old system. It was frustrating to start all over again. I feel that spawning should go back to the classic Halo spawn system for MLG game types. They can have the new spawn system for social, but leave MLG alone, man. On to Forge. Forge has been one of the cornerstones of Halo custom games since the classic years, and Halo Reach's Forge was obviously one of the best. Halo 4's Forge was limited, and made trying to make epic BTB maps a challenge, but fortunately 343 redeemed themselves with Halo 5, which had one of the best Forges to date. Unfortunately, I quit Halo 5 before the release of Forge due to it releasing after launch and me getting really bored really fast with Halo 5 multiplayer. So I didn't even get to play it. They need to bring the heat in Halo Infinite with Forge. And it needs to be at launch. It needs to be as massive as Reach and as customizable as Halo 5. I want to get back to making Machinima in Halo Infinite. And I need the tools to create an epic landscape and set for my characters. I think it would be a great idea to add UNSC, Covenant, Banished, and Promethean AI to Forge so that custom campaign maps could be a thing as well as good background characters for machinimas. The snap feature added in Halo 4 was the best idea 343 has had in the series, and the copy and paste feature in Halo 5 was amazing as well. Lastly, I will talk about player movement and abilities, and believe it or not, I do think that Halo Infinite needs sprint. This game will be so massive that getting across the map without sprint would be tiresome. I know that vehicles exist, but sprint is a basic function in most modern games, and I don't think sprint affected the playability of the previous three Halo titles. And as long as the sprint ability is taken away if you're using a thruster pack perk, then nobody has anything to complain about. I don't necessarily believe that thruster pack should be a core game mechanic though, due to the momentum halt they add to gameplay. It's really annoying to get a guy's shield down to one shot, and then he just thruster packs behind a wall and runs away. I've gotten so many assists in Halo 5 due to this reason. Honestly, I think sliding needs to go as well for this reason, because if you can't win a 1v1 without hiding behind cover, then go play Call of Duty. I really like the climbing feature added to the game, and I feel it really helps you transverse the map in a non-sluggish way, and I think it'll return in Halo Infinite again, due to the map being so large, and the open world features being introduced into the game. So that's the last of my opinions on what needs to change in Halo Infinite, when it comes down to the design of the game, map mechanics, forge, and player movement. If you've enjoyed this series, please hit the like button. It helps me to know what you guys like, so I can give you the content you want for the future. 
Join the Metal Uprising Reforged clan community now, because we are bringing our iconic clan back to life in a bigger way when Halo Infinite drops this holiday. We have turned our Discord into a clan advertisement hub for you to find people to join your clan as well. Be sure to check out our Discord trailer and what we have to offer to our fellow gamers. This is your TMUR community and clan leader, Bamu53, and I hope to see you suit up with me in my next game night video. I'll see you soon.